Fallout 4 has a million possibilities when it comes to its modding scene. And after over two years since I last did a Fallout video on my channel, I thought I was long due a return in this video to tackle arguably the series most valuable thematic aspect. And as you read in the title, that's of course its nuclear apocalypse. And so I set out to uncover some of the best Fallout 4 mods the community has to offer, to truly enhance this now 8 year old game into something you might see in a 2023 release, and do it in a way that offers a new challenge that will change the way you view the Commonwealth. From hordes of the living dead ghouls roaming what once were populated public areas and settlements plagued to forever relive their undead nightmare, to a realistic bustling Boston city that is now ghoulified to immersively be the most treacherous and danger filled location in the game, that is home to a plethora of new horrifying and immersive ghoul enemy types. So sit back and relax and get ready to re-experience Fallout 4 in 2023. The Commonwealth, a desolate state of isolation and decay, and Fallout 4 captures that feeling in its environments and art direction. But that doesn't entirely mean it can't be improved visually in order to immerse you further in the world around you. So we'll start by covering mods that affect the visuals and environments. And for this section I'm mostly going to show you a few alternatives in terms of the flora and fauna as I personally like to keep Fallout 4 vanilla themed as a lot of its thematic elements are centred around the type of environments that inhabit the Commonwealth. And so, we have two mods by the same author, the first named Rust Belt Flora, the second named Frostbite, which as you can tell completely transforms the world around you into an icy frozen land, born out of a nuclear winter that has fallen ever since the bombs fell. But while I think this looks amazing, for this video I'm going to stick with Rust Belt, as it aims to inhabit all of the traits that the vanilla game did, but in a much more beautiful way. Overgrowing the entire commonwealth with autumn brown trees and completely reworking the grasses and ground covers. And it's honestly such a big overhaul that this alone could reshape your experience with this game. But next is Vivid Weathers and Visceral EMB. Two mods which paired together offer a beautiful yet realistic graphical enhancement to Fallout 4 really bringing to life many of the environmental changes made by Rust Belt, and also just embracing the sort of full season frozen in time look that we have created. But with that being said, it's time to move on to the real meat and bones of this video, with the Danger and Immersion mods. Now Fallout 4 has its survival mode, and personally I think it works great with this game and is pretty much the only way I play Fallout in recent years. But in general something always felt a bit off in Fallout to me. And that was that during rad storms and other irradiated weathers, you could breathe just fine. Granted you did soak up a few more rads though. But that's where our next mod comes into play. Gas Masks of the Wasteland is a mod which distributes and adds functionality to gas masks in the game requiring them to be worn by the player and humanoid NPCs when in irradiated weathers, in order to breathe without suffocating to death. And it's only when those weathers are worn off, or you are able to make it to an interior, when you can safely remove that gas mask and breathe freely again. And the really nice thing about this mod is it comes with a bunch of difficulty presets dependent on how extreme of a playthrough you're aiming to have. In the easier modes, only rad storms and optional precipitation weathers will require the player and other human NPCs to equip a gas mask in order to survive breathing in the deadly toxins in the environment. However, if you choose the harder modes, the air will always be hazardous when outside, so whenever you decide to leave any type of interior location, 
you and all other NPCs and human enemies in the game will be required to equip their gas masks in order to survive, which actually adds some very cool gameplay elements to facing such enemies. For example, gas mask filters will have to eventually be changed, which are either purchasable or craftable, so it adds an extra element of preparation before venturing the wasteland. And you can even break enemies' gas masks during combat, causing them to quickly become irradiated and eventually die as a result, and really just adds an extra immersive element to manage in your game. But raising the stakes in our new toxin-filled world doesn't end with just throwing on a gas mask every now and again, because the Fallout series bears other potentials. As one of the enemies you often find rotting away in dank, irradiated corners are of course the feral ghouls. Mindless, rotten beasts who were once normal people like you or I, but whose minds have been melted to mush and their bodies withered and decayed. And as such, we have a few mods to make the Commonwealth feel infested with creatures of this caliber. Feral Ghoul Outbreak and Worldwide Ghouls are two mods which both aim to add more roaming ghouls throughout the Commonwealth, and particularly in Boston. Some areas are only home to a few extra, but others, more public locations, can often be found infested by a horde. Both of these mods together offer a terrifying Walking Dead-esque world for you to navigate. However, if you want more of a balance without blowing up your PC with a bunch of enemies everywhere, then you can just use Worldwide Ghouls alone as it adds the lesser amount. But our Ghoul mods don't end there. Feral Ghouls Expansion Pack is a mod which adds a plethora of new diversity among the Feral Ghoul spawn pool, with horrid new enemy types such as a terrifying crawler, who will stalk and scurry in order to rip you apart, bloaters who explode if you get too close, Brutes who are more of a rare tank type, and even psycho ghouls who wield weapons and wear armor. And there are just so many different types of ghouls added in this mod that it really helps to diversify the encounters you'll come across, especially when you have increased spawns from the previous mods. And together, not just combined with other feral ghoul mods we have just shown, but also the added danger preparation included in making the world or just rad storms more toxic provides you with a deadly but truly fun rewarding world to navigate throughout your playthrough. And with that being said, it's finally time to move on to the final section of this video, which will focus on improving the actual world and exploration itself. So now we have a new experience in terms of how the game looks and feels, and the dangers and gameplay you'll have to navigate while exploring it. I wanted to give the actual locations you encounter across your travels a fresh new feeling, while still sticking to that vanilla feeling as it's meant to be more like a ghoulified apocalypse of the Commonwealth. And that's where Rin's Fallout 4 comes into play. A mod which solely focuses on revamping a huge number of existing vanilla locations into something more realistic to real people and factions surviving the nuclear apocalypse. For example, this gunner outpost situated atop a highway bridge has been injected with some grandeur and realism to reflect the actual gunners that would have lived there. South Boston Military Checkpoint is another example of a newly level designed area home to many cool areas to explore, designed as if this was a real military outpost in the months prior to the bombs falling. And there are a bunch of locations that have received these types of upgrades, like the Gunner's Headquarters, which now actually looks formidable and difficult to infiltrate. But my personal favourite location is West Everett Estates, a settlement overran and ruled by super mutants. And honestly, there are just so many cool details and fun uses of gore and other super mutant adornments, to really get across that feeling of what an entire settlement ran by super mutants would actually end up looking like. And this mod adds a large number of these locations that have revamped the old vanilla locations to offer something more fresh and unique upon your next playthrough. And this mod even includes some new misc locations to explore, such as this shipping dock located out on the water on the coast. And overall, Rinse Fallout 4 just brings a much appreciated facelift to the entire Commonwealth and its inhabitants. But there is one last thing I've included at the end of this video for you all to enjoy. 
So without further ado, please raise a glass for the full non-TV version of Vintage Dreams. Thank you for watching this video. If you're in the market for a new PC, check out my page on Apex Gaming PCs. You can pick from three tiers of PCs fully capable of running modded Fallout or Skyrim if you're a channel regular. And they have just announced their free international shipping already in effect. Use code BURNS at checkout to save up to $250 off your purchase, and I'll bid you farewell and see you in the next video. Take care.